Okay, uh, today we're going to uh, go over chapter five. And one of the important aspects in chapter five is secondary uh, data, obviously. So let's take a look at this video, and then when we come back, uh, we'll discuss it. Okay, so any questions on that? All right. Okay, so primary data is data that's gathered specifically for the research problem and the project that you're currently working on. Secondary data, in contrast, have already been collected um, and you have a uh, opportunity to use it if it's uh, pertinent to your particular task. So one of the types of in, uh, secondary data are internal secondary, uh, secondary data. And that's data that your firm has already collected. So because of that, you, you'll know the um, quality of the uh, process that was applied. Uh, you'll have uh, an opportunity to discuss with uh, the, perhaps the people who uh, collected the data to find out if it's uh, uh, going to uh, be, uh, uh, have, a, have high enough quality to be applicable to uh, the work you're doing and also if it's relevant to the work you're doing. So um, oftentimes uh, companies will keep uh, a database uh, where they build and maintain this information uh, for uh, products, the suppliers, competitors, uh, and uh, customer relationships that we can use as secondary uh, data sources. So the applications of secondary data range from predicting broad changes in a culture's way of life to specific changes, such as selecting a street address uh, location for a new car wash. Internal databases consist of information collected by a company, uh, usually during the normal course of business transactions, and companies use their internal databases for the purposes of direct marketing and to strengthen relationships with customers. And this is known as customer relationship management, CRM. Uh, data mining is a type of software available to help managers make sense out of the um, ex extensive masses of information that be can be contained in these types of databases. So we also have another type of secondary data, external uh, data sources, and those are data that we get from outside of the firm. So we can uh, have three primary sources, um, published, syndicated, and external databases. Okay, so um, some published sources uh, of information are available and they're prepared for public distribution. Uh, there's different types of publications and uh, they have uh, specific functions. Reference guides is one type of publication and this refers uh, to types of uh, other reference sources and recommended uh, specific titles. These guides will tell you where to look for different types of information. We also have indexes and abstracts. These list periodical uh, articles by subject, author, title, keyword, and more. Uh, abstracts also provide summaries of the articles. We have bibliographies, and these list sources, such as books and journals, uh, on a particular topic. Another uh, type of external secondary data, uh, almanacs, manuals, and handbooks. These are also known as desk 
books. And they provide a wide variety of data in a single uh, convenient publication. Uh, a next type is dictionaries. These define terms and are uh, available for special subject areas. Encyclopedias provide essays um, on topics and they're usually in alphabetical order. A directories list companies, people, products, um, uh, organizations, uh, and usually provide brief information about each of them or about an industry. Uh, statistical sources provide numerical data, often in tables, pie charts, and bar charts. Bibli uh, bibliographical sources provide information about people, and it's useful for information on CEOs and others. And then legal sources uh, provide information about legislation, regulations, and current case law. Another type of external secondary data is syndicated data services. So this is data provided by firms that collect the data in a standard format and make the same information available to all the subscribing firms. External databases are supplied by organizations outside the firm. Uh, LexisNexis is an example, Factiva, uh, ABI, Inform. Uh, these are online databases and they're sources of secondary research uh, by search engines online. So some of the advantages of secondary data are listed here. Um, it can be obtained quickly and inexpensively. Uh, usually it's going to be available, so you're going to be able to find some information that can help you. Um, it can enhance your pri uh, primary data collection by informing you on the problem domain so that you know better what to ask for. Um, and it, sometimes you can even achieve your research objectives uh, with uh, the secondary data and you don't need to conduct uh, primary uh, research. So some of the disadvantages of secondary research, uh, research um, you're going to have widely uh, varying reporting units. So you're not going to be able to compare apples to apples because uh, one study does oranges, the other does apples. And you get this mismatch of the units of measurement. Um, they have differing uh, ways and processes to classify the data. Uh, sometimes this data may be stale. It's uh, old and out of date. Um, and you also don't have the information you need to assess the credibility of the data that's reported. Like you would, for example, with your internal uh, data, you will have the information to assess the credibility of the data. Secondary data are provided in reporting units such as a country, city, metro area, state, region, or uh, core base statistical areas. Uh, the reporting unit found in the information um, can be, uh, for example, county, uh, may not be what the, the user needs. You may need zip code, but instead you get county uh, as what's available in the secondary information. So at the primary-based research, you can collect exactly what you need and in the units that you need it by. Okay, so uh, core-based uh, statistical areas are geographical reporting units that are used by the Census Bureau um, <clears throat> and the uh, Office of Management uh, and Budget uh, defines a metropolitan uh, statistical area as an urban area of 50,000 or more uh, plus the uh, adjacent territory 
that has integration with this uh, core metropolitan area. Micropolitan uh, statistical areas are a new set of statistical areas that have at least one urban cluster of at least 10,000, but less than 50,000 in population. And it includes, again, this uh, adjacent territory that has a uh, close economic and social integration. A geodemographics is a term to describe the classification of an arbitrary and usually small uh, geographic area in terms of the characteristics of their inhabitants. So when we uh, decide to use uh, secondary information, we have to evaluate it. And um, again, we have to consider that sometimes measurement units reported in secondary data do not match the researcher's needs. Um, household income is reported, but you need per capita income. There's also a problem when the researcher needs to know what percentage of households having income over 80,000 for their research problem. And the secondary data source provides the category of uh, household incomes over 50, at 50,000 and over. So you can't get, uh, even though it's uh, the same measure, you can't get it because it's uh, at different levels. Uh, again, we talked about time. That's another thing we have to use to evaluate this data. How old is the secondary data? So the time that's passed since the last publication can be a problem when applying the data to the uh, current situation. The researcher has to make a decision on whether or not to use the data. Then how reliable is another thing we have to do to evaluate the data. How reliable? You have to determine the reliability of secondary uh, information. And so you want to, um, and then you want to say how uh, relevant is it to uh, what we're doing? So you have to evaluate it. What was the purpose of the study? Who collected the information? What information was collected? How was the information obtained? Um, how is it uh, consistent uh, among the various secondary information sources that we, we've collected? <clears throat> so we also have census information that's available, and obviously that's very credible, but um, it's something that uh, you have to decide, is it granular enough for your needs? Is it going to uh, provide you with uh, relevant information for your particular uh, problem? In addition to the Census Bureau, there's also um, an American Community Survey that's now available. And the American Community Survey um, is one of the most significant changes in the availability of secondary data uh, to be used for marketing purposes in the last couple of decades. The primary advantage is that the American Com Community Survey will provide data annually instead of once every 10 years. Uh, since these data will have the Census Bureau's high marks for credible, reliable data and will also be current, the ACS is likely to become a major secondary data research tool for market researchers. So um, standardized information is a type of secondary data in which the data collected and the process of collecting the data are standardized for all users. And there's two broad classifications, syndicated data and uh, standardized services. So syndicated data are collected in a standard format 
and made available to all the subscribers. Some of the advantages, shared cost, even your competitors are interested in market direction, so they're willing to chip in with you and the others in the market to get information about what's going on. Uh, high quality of data that's collected. Um, it's uh, data that's very timely. Uh, data is normally disseminated very quickly. Uh, some of the disadvantages are you don't get to customize what you collect. It's standard collect. It's the standard data uh, content that's always collected. Typically, a buyer has to commit to long-term uh, contracts, and of course, your competitors have access to the same information. So it's not going to really give you a competitive advantage. Standardized services refer to a standardized marketing research process that is used to generate uh, information for a particular user. So here you can get custom data for you that might give you an advantage. So uh, some of the advantages of a standardized service is you're using the experience of the outside firm offering the service. It's going to be cheaper typically for them to do this type of work because they're set up for it. And they're going to be faster in uh, doing uh, the, the research. And you get the custom data. However, it's going to be using standardized approaches. So uh, some of the disadvantages is maybe the research you want doesn't fit into the standardized approaches that the firm offers. And then also, the firm, uh, the outside firm, may not be knowledgeable about your particular industry. So application of standardized information, um, we can use it to uh, measure uh, consumers or customers' attitudes, define market segments, uh, conduct marketing, uh, market tracking studies, and uh, look at media usage and the effectiveness of our uh, promotions in that. So um, one company that offers standardized uh, uh, services is um, Esri, and uh, they tap into a variety of different markets. Another is Experian, um, and they help you identify market mavens, and these are people who are sources of information about products, shopping, and services. Uh, so uh, they can provide facts that uh, help others make <clears throat> their decisions. Okay, uh, any questions on uh, chapter five?